Such a new experience can be made about space. We know objects are only possible because of space. Since when it comes to the objective world, space is the foundation. Within conventional methods of discovery, we seem stuck within what we can perceive and think. Yet strangely, beyond such limitations, we discover that space itself is not objective. How can this be? We seem to look around and perceive space everywhere. Although we do have an experience that we call space, it's not really space. It's possible to actually experience that space doesn't exist the way we think, even though it encompasses everything. Even though it encompasses every object that does exist. Just because everyone knows apples fall from trees, only when we grasp that the apple doesn't fall up do we recognize an unseen force that we now call gravity? Just so, why do we assume three dimensions is a given? Since no new Newton has provided an insight beyond the obvious assumption of space, it's difficult for our collective consciousness to entertain such a notion that space itself has no space. Its nature is beyond three dimensions. It is infinite and therefore without end or substance. Eh? It's possible for one to have an experience of seemingly infinite space that is profoundly moving. This is a significant change of state, but alone doesn't provide a direct consciousness of the true nature of space, and so is not an enlightenment. If you become directly conscious of the nature of space, you realize that it doesn't exist, that space itself has no dimension to it, but creates all objective dimensions. This then is an enlightenment in which the true nature of all objective existence is also grasped. This takes us from the relative back to the absolute. We live in this world right now. The foundation of this world is absolute, but almost everyone is ignorant of that fact. And believing in some hearsay or notion that suggests such a reality is still just as ignorant. <laughs> there is no discord or conflict between the absolute and the relative, so there is no need to choose or favor one over the other. Only ignorance makes it seem as if these two are different and separate. Since we just since we just experience the relative unless we have a direct consciousness it seems the absolute can only exist as a belief yet the use of the word absolute only refers to what is absolutely true about existence the same existence that for us shows up as relative distinctions <laughs> the relative world is what occupies our awareness but just as our consciousness rarely includes absolutes, our attention doesn't tend to focus on the foundation dynamics of even the relative. We don't notice or rarely consider what constitutes our world. All process, thinking, emotion, and every other experience we have are relative. Understanding how they are constructed helps us relate to them more effectively. How we see these activities can be very diverse as well as more or less empowering.